Hello everyone, Tom Nickel here, Director of Product Marketing at Velostrata. Today, I'm going to walk you through how Velostrata can easily migrate a large multi-tier application from on-premises VMware into Microsoft's Azure Cloud. As you can see, we've got two VMs here, one for the Sugar CRM application and one for the Sugar CRM database, which has two disks attached, one of which is 750 gigabytes. We'll click on the demo folder so we can see a table that includes information on both VMs. We can then select both VMs together so we can kick off our migration from on-prem into Azure. Velostrata's plugin integrates directly into VMware's vCenter. So once you've selected those two VMs, you simply right click and select the option that you're looking for. In this case, selecting multiple VMs using the UI means that all of them are deployed using the same instance type and in parallel. This works well for ad hoc movement, but for more complex applications or sets of VMs, we recommend using Velostrata's Automation Runbook feature, which enables us to define a list of multiple VMs, their relationships, and startup dependencies, as well as some more granular cloud provisioning options, such as instance types, subnets, static IPs, and such. The Automation Runbook is in CSV format and easy to manage for mass migration projects. That being said, an important part of migration is, of course, testing, which we're not going to show today. But to support that, Velostrata has the test clone capability, which automatically creates a thin clone in the cloud within a few minutes and with no data replication. Their production system remains live and uninterrupted as this clone operates in an isolated network with right isolation, so any changes made during testing won't propagate back to the production system. It's a really safe, easy way for IT to test workloads in the cloud and find the right configurations before officially migrating. So going back to the Velostrata menu, let's proceed with our migration. We'll walk through a short wizard where we select the appropriate cloud options for this migration, things like instance type and size, data policies, security policies, subnets, etc. These options are all populated from our account in Azure, so there's no manual input here. We'll start our stopwatch and then click Finish. Once the migration begins, you can monitor progress on the right in our Recent Tasks menu. And Velostrata also adds a portlet for each VM within vCenter, which gives you status updates and information about the migration. Right now, in the background, Velostrata is automatically adapting the virtual machines to run in Azure without any manual intervention by us. After just over three minutes, we can log in to our Azure dashboard where we can see our instances are already running. And again, it is worth noting that these had over 750 gigabytes worth of attached disks. So this is exceptionally fast. Now, if we go back to vCenter, you can see our Velostrata portlet has also updated with the correct information about these Azure instances, including that they are ready to be used. Once the instances are running, the next phase Velostrata performs is the remaining data transfer, which takes place in the background. Using our patent pending technologies, which include but aren't limited to WAN optimizations, multi-tier caching, and deduplication, we're able to get the workload running in minutes while the remaining data uploads silently and intelligently in the background. While the storage transfers, we can still use and access this application. Here you can see that we've automatically updated the DNS and we can access this application by the web just like normal. And another important distinction with Velostrata's migration is our write back technology. All the changes happening in our cloud instance are continuously saved back in our storage on-prem, allowing the use of existing backup systems with no policy change, as well as providing for quick rollback at any step of the migration workflow without any data loss whatsoever. The time to finish the data transfer will of course vary based on size and uplink, 
But once it's done, the Vela Startup Portlet will update again and let users know that these Azure instances are ready to be completely detached from the on-prem system. To finish our migration with a complete detach, simply return to vCenter, right-click the VM, and select our detach operation. This will prompt you to reselect an instance type. The reason for this is that maybe when you originally migrated, you weren't sure how much load you'd be supporting. So, if you need to scale the instance type up or down, you can do that prior to detaching and we'll handle that change automatically for you also. The detach only takes a few minutes, and if we click the folder the VMs are contained within, we can view the status of their detach operations. Once that's done, we can make any final changes before we perform our final operation in the migration, called cleanup. This clears the on-prem cache and removes these VMs from Velostratus management. The VMs will remain on-prem for IT to back up or archive and then delete. The Azure Cloud instances will of course continue to run. They simply won't be managed by Velostrata via vCenter any longer. Once cleanup concludes, we've completed our migration from on-prem VMware to Azure's cloud. That concludes our video today. Thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions, feel free to check out velostrata.com or drop us a line at info at velostrata.com.